Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'd like to talk about this title, Learning from the Tohoku Earthquake and Facing Towards the Hikurangi Earthquake, Ocean Bottom Seismology and Geodesy. Facing Towards the Hikurangi Earthquake, or well, looks like a dangerous title, right? <laughs> but the main, today's my main message to you is, if we know something, we can do something. If we do, do not no, anything. We can do not. We can do nothing. This is the main message. To achieve that, we'd like to. Now we are trying to understand the earthquake mechanism by using or based on the ocean bottom seismology and geodesy. So now I'm showing the world map of the earthquake. Now, all of all. Earthquakes are showing by red dot or yellow dot or green dot. Can you see? Almost all earthquakes are concentrated in this area around the Pacific region. We call it the Ring of Fire. New Zealand located here. Many earthquakes are occurring, looks like. Japan as well. Why? Main reason is clay techniques, motion of the crust. The ocean clay are born in along the mid ocean ridge. As after uh, boiling, the plate moving to eastward and westward. This is a uh, slice to the uh, a center of the earth. This is the inner core, outer core, mantle, and crust here. And the plate is subducting, to, moving to the east and west, and finally they are subducting into the earth again. This is a subduction system. Due to this subduction, or owing to this subduction, unfortunately, we have the many, many earthquakes. <laughs> Around, around the ring of fire. So this is a schematic image of the uh, of the, uh, large earthquake or big earthquake. So this is a subducting ocean plate here, and this is sliding to uh, this way, and finally this is subducting <laughs> beneath the uh, continental plate. If we have some coupling. It's a uh, touched, strongly touched. The ocean plate drag into the earth of continental plate like this. Finally, this portion will slip. Firstly, at this moment, earthquake occurred, and sometimes caused a large tsunami. And this is a, uh, uh, now we are trying to show, showing you a picture of strong motion accompanied with a 2011 Tohoku Aoki earthquake. So this is the epicenter and um, Strong motion propagate from the epicenter to the all the way like this, and strong motion almost continued five minutes or six minutes or more. I try to show again. Earthquake occurred, and here is the Sendai city. Sendai city has a very very strong motion. And this is propagated to the Kanto area as well as uh, Kansai area. And this is a 540, almost 40, 400 seconds. <laughs> very, very long duration. So this figure is a kind of peak ground uh, accelerogram. If we look at around the Sendai area, this is almost 900 centimeter per second per second. This is almost close to the gravity. I mean, it, this is a rich gravity, probably 
everybody go to the upgrade, <laughs> like a trampoline, right? So, a company, the main shop, we had a very, very large and serious tsunami. This is one very, very famous picture captured from around the Sendai airport. You can see this, this is an ordinal coastline before the earthquake or before coming tsunami. Tsunami leads to the here. This is a kind of uh, channel. And this almost leads to Sendai airport. And after that, Sendai airport fully covered by the tsunami. So now I'm showing you a satellite image from space. Now I'm showing the two satellite images, before the earthquake and after the earthquake. Sendai city, it's, that is one of the largest city close to the epicenter, is located here. And this is a before the earthquake, and this is after the earthquake. Probably you can see a kind of dark area around here. This is a tsunami induced area, tsunami induction area. The distance from the coastline to the edge of induction area is almost four kilometers. Four kilometers. Where is the four kilometer from here to land? Almost airport or something? It's so, oh, it was pretty I mean, unbelievable thing. Now, this is a picture from the uh, sky. You can see a runway here, runway of Sendai Airport runway. Sendai, you can see a uh, airport here. And this is also airport. And this is a highway. Almost all tsunami induction stopped here because highway uh, has a role of uh, uh, breakwater. But and the tsuna, uh, in Sendai Airport, fully covered by the tsunami after the earthquake, showing here. So now we are looking at the more northern part of uh, Honshu area. This is the Iwate Prefecture. And in, along the Iwate Prefecture, we had a very, very high tsunami of uh, almost exceeding 20 meters, 20 meters. This is also one of very, very famous picture after, during the tsunami event. This is a picture from Tarocho, Iwate Prefecture. Tarocho had a very, very high breakwater before the earthquake, which are on height is almost 10 meter. 10 meter is decided based on the knowledge of uh, seismology or, or seismo engineering seismology. This is a uh, breakwater is here and tsunami easily exceeded of this water break, breakwater like this. If we have some information of future tsunami, especially future earthquake and tsunami, especially tsunami height, probably we can make higher breakwater, 20 meter, 30 meter. But probably 20 meter and 30 meter is not enough sometimes. So to, to mitigate this disaster, we need more information from on the seismology and engineering seismology. So which knowledge had we lacked before the earthquake, especially 2011 Tohokoki earthquake? Of course, I cannot know when the earthquake will occur. It's impossible based on the current level of 
seismology in the world. But probably we could do or we could know what will happen during the earthquake, before the earthquake, and what will happen after the earthquake. And we can know or we can announce how can we evacuate from tsunami before the earthquake. If we have some, if we have more information before the earthquake. So now I'm showing the slip distribution of 2011 Tohoku earthquake. This is the Japan Trench, and this here is the Iwati Prefecture. Sendai is here, showing on the previous picture uh, figures. And these colors showing the slip amount at each portion. If you look at here near the trench, almost lead to the 40 meter or more than 50 meters sometimes. And if you look at the land world, sweep amount is almost 20 meters or something. And if you go to a more land world, 10 meters or something. This is quite large. Of course, before the earthquake, Japanese seismologists try to know what will happen in the future. This is a kind of a prediction of slip area before the earthquake, before the 2011 Tohokuoki earthquake. Based on the past large earthquake and kind of paleo earthquake, paleo seismology. These patches are showing the past large earthquake with magnitude of seven or eight. Japanese seismologists believe, oh, Future, future earthquake could occur only at this portion. So we care about this area. We can say something. Based on only onshore seismometers and onshore GPS or geodesy. <clears throat> but actually, Tohoku okay, earthquake had a large sweep during the earthquake. And especially if we look at the near the trench, here is a more than 40 or 50 meters. But before the earthquake, we have no mark, no mark. Because near the trench, this is a no potential of the large earthquake. Why? We have no information around here because we have no seismic station or geodetic station before the earthquake. <coughs> so after the earthquake, to Toyo University and non-political organization had uh, uh, information from the uh, survivor in the Tohoku area. They asked, did you evacuate right after the earthquake? More than 50% said yes, immediately, but some probably a 40 or something. Yes, but not immediately. Summer, no, I did not. But it should be noted that this information don't, do not include no survivor. This is only from survivor. Probably a no survivor could be they try to evacuate from tsunami immediately, but something occurred. And somebody, oh, tsunami is not, not so serious, so we will stay in the house, and unfortunately uh, killed by the tsunami, probably. And the other question, in how many minutes after the quake did you evacuate? 30% 10, within the 10 minutes? and somebody 10 minutes to 20 minutes, and somebody 20 to 30 minutes. And the other one is more. If we say something based on the ocean bottom geodesy or ocean bottom seismology, when tsunami will come after the earthquake, almost all can evacuate immediately. 
So, main issue before the earthquake, we have no real time monitoring data near the trench or offshore area. This is the main reason for the huge damage after the earthquake. So, for science purpose, Tohoku University and their colleague deployed some ocean bottom seismometers and some ocean bottom pressure recorders just above the uh, epicenter area of the 2011 Tohoku Oki earthquake. Ocean bottom seismometers to measure a shaking at, at the bottom. Ocean bottom pressure recorders to measure uh, uplift or subsidence at the sea bottom. So this is a, a kind of autonomous ocean bottom pressure recorders, and this is a autonomous ocean bottom seismometers. But this is not so large, almost like this. Not so large. So by using these instruments, we could know what happened before and after the earthquake. So this is a, a one of the data from the ocean bottom pressure recorders located here, close to the trench. This is observed raw data. This is a, at this time, we deployed ocean bottom pressure recorder to the bottom and increase the uh, pressure with increasing the depth and touch down to the bottom and record, recording, ocean bottom recorders, recording uh, 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 ocean tide like this. If we remove ocean tide like this, this is showing by the. And at this moment, ob observed pressure abruptly decreased like this. And record again like this. And if we, if we grow up in this portion like this, amplitude of degrees is 500 hectopascal during the earthquake. 500 hectopascal is almost five meter uplift at the, this portion near the range. This is one of the reasons to cause a huge tsunami uh, with a height of uh, 20 meters or something. Um, the, by using this kind of ocean bottom geodesy, we can know where is a slip area during the earthquake, showing by orange like this. And here is a uh, 30 meter slip area, and this is a 50 meter slip area. And we also know where is a slip area of the largest fall shock, which was occurred two days before the main shock. And we also have the other information from the ocean bottom seismology and geodesy. That is a slow earthquake before the Tohoku Oki earthquake. What is a slow earthquake? Slow earthquake is a slower slip earthquake without seismic energy. If we compare uh, two earthquake with moment mag magnitude of seven, if you look at the ordinary earthquake, rapture only continue at 20 seconds. But if you look at the slow earthquake of magnitude seven, that continue almost several weeks, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Very, very slow. This is a slow earthquake. This slow earthquake was observed before the 2011 Tohoku Oki earthquake near the epicenter of Tohoku Oki earthquake. That was occurred one, almost one month ago before the occurring of the main shock showing here. Main shock was uh, March 11. Slow slip was Study from the end of January. 
And this slow earthquake also has the other type of slow earthquake. We call the tectonic tremor, are located here, almost overlap the 50 meter sweep area. And this slow earthquake induced or triggered the largest foreshock two days before the main shock. And this largest foreshock also trigger a kind of the other kind of slow earthquake in this area. And this slow earthquake propagated to the north, uh, southward and leads to the epicenter of the main shock. This slow earthquake triggers the main shock. So before the 2011 Tokyo earthquake, we have a kind of a warning signal from the bottom. Slow earthquake and the technical tremor and after sweeps of the largest foreshock, at least two days, one month before or two, two days before the occurring of the main shock. Why we cannot say something? Because we use the autonomous ocean bottom seismometer and uh, pressure recorders. This is not connected to the cable. We have no information on real time. This is the main reason we cannot say something. But if we have a cable system before the 2011 Tokyo earthquake, and we, we, if we know the uh, nature of slow earthquake, we can say something before the earthquake. Now, now, in the, now I'm showing the two cable system deployed after the 2011 Tokyo earthquake and before the 2011 Tokyo earthquake in the Nanka area, which are uh, uh, introduced in detail by uh, Professor Mochizuki next talk. So if we have cable system before the 2011 Tokyo earthquake like this, this is the cable system, and this is a kind of ocean bottom seismometers or ocean bottom pressure recorders connected on the, on the cable. And we capture an occurrence of the slow earthquake before the uh, main shock by using cable system. We can say something as pre earthquake early warning, a kind of a storm warning or dry warning or something. If we have this information, we can prepare uh, earthquake early warning. That is uh, usually provided just after the occurrence of the main shock. We can prepare. So I'd like to say, now you are faced to the occurrence of the Hikurangi earthquake. If you have a cable system, we can say, we mean a seismologist in the New Zealand say something before the earthquake. But if we have no cable, nobody say nothing. So this is my main message to you. Please send your mail to your uh, prime minister <laughs> <laughs> to make ocean bottom cable system of uh, around Hawke's Bay. So now I'm trying to do the, this kind of ocean bottom seismology and geodesy in the world, not only in the New Zealand, uh, Japan, but also uh, Mexico, collaborated with international researchers. This is the reason why I'd like to prepare the future Nankai earthquake in Japan with gathering all of the information from the, around the uh, ring of fire, not only New Zealand, Japan, Mexico. If we have the, some information, we can say something before the next future Nankai earthquake. This is my main motivation to do as a seismologist in Japan. Thanks so much. <laughs>